So while we're waiting, it would be great to know uh, where you are all based uh, today. So where you are watching this webinar from, for example, I'm watching uh, this webinar, or I'm in this webinar from Madrid, uh, Spain. So I'd love to know where you're all from. Uh, so in the chat box, feel free to let us know. Okay, from Seville, excellent, okay. So I've been to Seville a few times, it's a lovely city. Okay, it's great to see we've got a number of attendees. So again, we'll give everyone about two more minutes and then we'll crack on. So I'm gonna write in the chat box as well. So for those of, of you that have just arrived, uh, welcome. We're waiting just one more minute before we start the webinar. Um, and during this time, it would be brilliant if you could tell me where you are watching this webinar from in the chat box. Okay, Martin, you're calling from Cordoba. Brilliant. I have yet to explore Cordoba, but I have heard that Cordoba gets extremely hot in, in, in the summer. If I'm not mistaken, I think Cordoba was... Uh, at the, the hottest temperature last year or something in Spain. Okay, we've got some more people from Madrid, Seville. All right, 30 seconds and we're gonna crack on. So Eugene's coming, calling in from Barcelona. Lovely, one of my favorite cities actually. Okie dokie, so it's two past 11 uh, on my watch, which means we're going to get started. Um, so I'm actually going to close the chat box uh, and the participant list. So I won't see the chat box as we're going through, uh, but I'll remind everyone that please use the chat box uh, for your comments, for your questions. There's also a Q&A box uh, that you can use uh, to ask questions and that uh, at the time we'll definitely have uh, time at the end to answer some of these questions as best as we can. Okay, so let's close this down. Right. So I'm just going to confirm with uh, with my teammate, Rachel. Rachel, you can see that I've changed my slides, correct? Yep, okay, brilliant. Excellent. All right, today, everyone, thank you so much uh, for being here. Uh, we're teachers, which means that we don't have a lot of time. Um, and... The fact that you're taking time out of your busy schedules to be here with me this morning uh, means a lot. Uh, it also shows me that you're uh, probably extremely dedicated to your learners and to your teaching context. So yeah, hats off to you all. You're the real heroes here. Um, let's think about what we're gonna be looking at today. So we're gonna be looking at two main things. The first one, we're gonna be exploring the support that we Cambridge have uh, created and have provided to teachers who teach teenagers, who prepare teenage learners for exams, for English language learning in general. There's lots of support that we have. And I think as a teacher, because I am a teacher still, um, one of the biggest things that comes across for me is, you know, what resources are available, being aware of these things. So, so we're going to touch on that and hopefully highlight uh, where you can access these resources. Uh, and uh, my colleague, Rachel, is going to be pasting lots of things in the chat box today so that you'll be able to follow these links. And in the second half of this session, we're going to be exploring uh, the product thinking space in detail. So this is one of our course book products that we have uh, that's uh, particular for the Spanish market. Uh, so we're, I'm looking forward to exploring that in more detail with you. Now, just a reminder, you will receive certificates for attending this session uh, following this. It may take some time. So if you don't get it immediately, uh, oh, sorry, if you don't get it immediately, please don't worry. Uh, this will come uh, at least uh, within a week after uh, after the webinar. OK. And as I mentioned before, feel free to interact with us in the chat box and the Q&A. And yes, we will have time at the end of the session uh, to answer some of your questions. 
So Cambridge support for teenagers. I mentioned this is a really important aspect that we're going to be touching on. And there's, there's lots. But I want to take a moment to think about the time of the year that we're in. So we're, we're in September. Well, no, no, sorry. It's the 1st of October. We're in October now, uh, which means that we're still in the kind of the start of the year phase. We're still in the creating the right environment for our learners phase. Okay. And there are a number of things that we probably need to be doing. So our students, they need to feel that you care about their personal lives and aspirations. We need to be establishing that rapport with our learners. And I know that many of us are thinking, well, this is the common sense thing that we do. This is what we do every year. But it's, I think it begs repeating and focusing on more explicitly because creating those strong emotional connections with your learners in a safe learning environment is what's, what's going to create uh, the strong foundations for effective learning throughout the year. Now, along with that, we need to create opportunities to have our learners' efforts recognized and help them move forward. And that, that at times can be quite difficult and it may involve goal setting, it may involve reflection on learning, reflection on success. Many things are going to be involved in that. And hopefully throughout today, we're going to be identifying a number of ideas that you can use to, to, to meet some of these objectives, um, but also some ideas on, on how you can exploit your materials um, to, and help them make the, the materials that we provide more specific to your learners' needs and wants. Now, we, we recognize that um, if you're like me, you have like one or two back to school activities that you like to use, but there are many more out there. Uh, and so if you would like to explore some other activities of, uh, that you can use within the first few months of school, uh, we have a, a whole blog on this on our, on our uh, blog, The World of Better Learning, which is a brilliant place, by the way, because I have loads of blog um, posts on a range of different topics. Uh, but feel free to scan this QR code. Um, and these QR codes or the links we pasted in the chat box uh, as we move through, okay? So this is a lovely uh, post which you can look at and access a number of activities that you can use uh, to start the, the year. But let's focus not so much on the class, but also on the lesson. Uh, we have uh, the Herbert Book does 101 Tips for Teaching Teenagers, which is a brilliant book written specifically for teachers. It's practical in, in orientation. Um, but something that we can do with our learners as we move through the content is asking them pre-questions, one, two or three questions and getting them. So basically what we're going to do is going to write uh, a number of questions on the board and our learners uh, are going to write their answers to these questions. Now, these questions are going to be focused on the content that we're looking at. So maybe we're looking at sport. Maybe we're looking at goal setting. Maybe we're looking at food, whatever it might be. Um, we can get our learners to write their answers to these questions. And we're going to keep these answers. We're going to keep the pieces of paper that they write these answers on. Then after the lesson, or perhaps if, the, if the, the material you're working with extends over two or three lessons, we're going to go back to those pieces of paper and they're going to reflect on the knowledge that they said they had or their answers and see if they would change something. Okay, so this is a great little tip. Um, it's, it's really, really easy to do. No preparation is needed, um, but has uh, the potential of aiding in retention of, uh, of information. So, and this is one of the tips that can be found in, in Herbert Pochter's 101 Tips for Teaching Teenagers, a book that I would highly recommend uh, for all of us that work with teenagers. So let's move along and let's focus. So we've been speaking so far about like the classroom, the style of the year, rapport and language learning to an element, um, to a certain extent, sorry. But I think we would all recognize that language learning is not only about learning languages. And... We, we've recognized that we've probably known that from a very long time. And Cambridge has recognized this and we've created what's called the Cambridge Life Competencies Framework. And this recognizes that language learning is much more than just looking at language. There are many different competencies in life uh, that we need to touch on. And our materials, and one of the materials that we're gonna be looking at today's thinking space, were, are, they're based off of this framework. Now, many of you who work with teenagers in Spain, you're going to be very familiar with the LOMLO, okay? And this is uh, the law that changed a number of years ago that looked at changing towards teaching to las competencias claves, the key competencies. And there's a direct correlation between our life competencies and the LOMLO. And we'll touch on that a little bit later. But what's important to note here is that the life competency framework 
is a framework, but it's also something that we've changed into practical ideas for teachers. And we've identified what are called our activity cards. So these activity cards are freely available. You can download them. Uh, we have a set for young learners. We have a set for teenagers. We have a set for adults. But basically what they do is they've taken the framework of life competencies and they've created activities, practical classroom activities that connect to these life competencies. And so if you're looking for how to bring the theoretical into your classroom, this is the perfect way. Uh, and there's, uh, there's a QR code that you can scan or there's a link in the chat box as well. Highly recommend taking a look at these um, and simply printing them out, having them in your class and then pulling them out as needed or using them in the planning stages of your, uh, of your lessons. So we focus now on the tools for success for our learners. Now, many of our learners are probably preparing uh, for a Cambridge assessment exam. So maybe the B1 preliminary, the B2 first, the C1 advanced, and so on and so forth. Okay, now how do we prepare our learners? Well, of course, we're going to do lots of preparation in class, but one tool that uh, Cambridge has developed to help learners in this journey is the test and train. And test and train is something that's, uh, that's integrated into a lot of our materials um, and it focuses not so much on just doing the exam. It focuses on the training element that goes to the exam. So we're looking at exam practice, but exam support through that practice. Really, really important here. And perhaps what's most interesting to us is the, the mobile friendliness of it. So we have a class-based and a self-study uh, option, if you will, or how it operates. But for learners, they don't necessarily need to have a laptop with them. It's a mobile friendly uh, application or website, I should say, uh, that they can access either in class or at home. To go along with that, uh, many of you may have heard of, but if you haven't heard of, I highly recommend checking this out. It's called Write and Improve. Now, the word, we're gonna be talking about AI today. But one of the most practical applications of AI, in my eyes, is what we've created here with Write and Improve. As teachers, we want our learners to do lots of writing because we know that to get better at writing, well, you need to do writing. Uh, now, Write and Improve is a software where learners can write uh, a sub submission like this. They have a task that can connect to the Cambridge exams. And then they write their response. And you can see here that, that we have a learner that's written a response, but then they get feedback. And so this is where AI is being used to uh, look at what has been created and provide feedback on you know, the language that's being used and connected to the Cambridge criteria. So how, have they, how well have they answered the question? Now, as a teacher, this is really beneficial for me because I know that I can't mark four or five writings uh, or pieces of writing from each learner each week. It's impossible. Uh, I have so many other things that I need to do. However, what I can do is assign, write and improve as a homework task for our learners and emphasizing to learners that they need to be autonomous Maybe you could bring, sorry, there was an issue with my, can you still hear me, Rachel? Yes, okay, perfect, cool. Sorry, there was an issue with my uh, microphone. Um, so you, you could perhaps bring reflection into uh, the your classroom of, of how they've been successful uh, in completing their writing tasks. Now, along with this, if you are using Cambridge materials, you will have access to Cambridge One, which is uh, our digital platform, which has everything in one place. And this links not only to the learner, because there is a there is a, a platform that learners can access, which has access to test and train, uh, and a lot of the uh, materials that students have, uh, but also the assignments that we can assign, which we'll talk about in a sec. But more for, for the teacher, what's really important is that we have everything that's accessible. So back when I first started language teaching, we had cassettes, we had CDs, we had the course book. No, those days are gone. We have everything that's accessible in one place, one platform. Now, thinking about the landing page, which you will uh, arrive at, if you type into Google Cambridge One, 
uh, you'll come to this lovely login page. And it's very easy to log in. You can use your Google account, your Facebook, your Apple account, or of course, you can create an account using uh, your institution's login, uh, your, your personal email, whatever it might be. Once you arrive or once you have logged in, you get to another landing page. And this is the main page which you will look at because you've got my classes, which we can see at the top here, my library and my training. Let's talk about my classes first. My classes is all of the classes that you have uh, linked to a certain uh, course book or product. Uh, so maybe you have uh, one or two classes that are using you know, Thinking Space B1. Then you have your library, and this is all of the materials that you have um, you have accessed or you have access to through this account. And then, of course, you have all of the course materials down the bottom here. And then this section at the top there, my training, uh, this takes it a little bit further, and this provides you with more support on how to use Cambridge One. So today we're looking at the overview of Cambridge One, but if you're struggling with Cambridge One, you're not sure how to use it check out the, 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 the training support that we have. Sorry, let me just go back. So each of the courses that we have, and there are more courses, not only for Cambridge One, but for all of our, uh, or most of our course book series that we have on Cambridge One, there's a series of training materials for teachers that takes you step-by-step step through the materials, how to use them. And Cambridge One is no different. We have a, a training uh, course for teachers uh, that would like to get more familiar with Cambridge One. When we're looking at the materials themselves, we can see that we have lots of things uh, for on this page for teachers. So we can see that we have the practice extra, text and, test and train. We can see the progress of our learners. We can look at collaboration plus, uh, plus, sorry. So we look at the online practice that's available to learners. We can also create assignments and assessments for our learners. Now, this is quite important for us that are engaged in formative and summative assessments uh, with teenage learners. We need to assess their learning of certain components that we've taught. This is how we're going to be able to do that really easily because these this test generator connects to the units of the course books that we have been using, in this case, Thinking Space. And we have a whole range of extra resources that uh, uh, are going to be useful to us because we know that the course book is not something that we're going to follow page after page uh, blindly. We're going to be needing to adapt it to our learners' needs and wants. And there's going to be extra things that we're probably going to need. So we have lots of extra resources uh, made available for you. In the Teachers Resource Bank, you can see here we have, and these are some of the examples that we have of extra resources. Quite a few in there. And then we have, and I mentioned that we would talk about this before, we have some information on how the product itself connects to the LOMLO. Okay, so if you're, uh, if you're asked to say, oh, how are you focusing on LOMLO uh, competencies in your classes? Well, this is going to give you the information that you need to be able to answer that question. And here we go again. Uh, sorry, this is a repeated slide, so we're going to uh, go over that. Right. So we've covered so far quite a few things. Uh, we've looked at the lesson, the class, some tips for teaching teenagers. We looked at um, write and improve. We looked at Cambridge One. But what about where to go for more ideas? Well, we have created a, a, a website that is specific to the exam preparation journey. In fact, it's called the exam preparation journey website. And on here, on this website, you will have access to a range of classroom related resources and exam focused resources. So you when you get there, you will see that each on this website, you have what are called packs. And there are 10 packs at the moment. And we're, and we're continuing updating the website with more ideas. Now, these packs, they don't only just provide exam activities. They provide ideas for the classroom of how to make the classroom as a successful learning space as possible for your learners. And all of these resources are freely available on this website. There are, as I mentioned, 10 packs, and each of these packs have, you know, between three to 10 ideas for your classrooms. So there's plenty of ideas uh, for, for you and for your learners. Now, the one thing that I like as a teacher is that the packs are focused on not so much activities, but certain stages in the exam preparation journey. So for example, pack one looks at how we start the journey, goal setting, 
how we can get learners to uh, understand the exam. And that continues in pack two. Then we also have packs that look at running mock tests, the information that we need as teachers, what resources do we need to be able to do that? So all of this is very useful for me as a teacher and also as a director of studies. We also have the uh, the original Cambridge website, which uh, you can go to and access and, and you can sign up for our free teacher newsletter, which comes up with teaching tips and updates on our resources quite regularly. And we also have uh, on this site information about the upcoming webinar. So you can actually see here, I was just talking about the mock test. Uh, we have a, a webinar coming up. Um, my colleague, Sarah Ellis, is going to be uh, talking on Tuesday, the 15th of October, uh, about the power of the mock test. So we have a, a range of webinars that are coming up uh, that you can access through this site as well. Now, if you're like me, you love reading long books on research, um, but you're probably not like me. And there's no need to be like me because really teachers, we don't have a lot of time. And there's a lot of stuff in the research world that's, um, we could say boring or impractical for the classroom. So what we've done at Cambridge is we've created the Cambridge Papers in EOT. And there are quite a few of these and they're freely available online. And what they are are 25 to 30 page booklets that summarize the kind of the, the, the latest research in certain areas uh, within EOT. And they put this theory into teacher-friendly language and then combine it with practical implications and activities for the classroom. So for example, one of my favorites in this uh, is this one here, the specific learning uh, learner or learning difficulties in EOT, which is a brilliant booklet that looks at how we can work with neurodiverse learners, some practical uh, uh, accommodations that we, we teachers can provide our learners with, with uh, learning difficulties like dyslexia uh, and some of the activities that are going to be not so much time demanding on us, but have a, uh, a high degree of impact on the success of learners. So feel free to check these out. There are about 20 or 25 of these available at the moment, and we're continually uh, updating these as we go. Now, there are two words on everyone's lips at the moment. Sustainability is one of them. So in the chat box and I wonder if you could, when I say the word sustainability, what comes to your mind? What do you think about? What's a, perhaps the, the definition, maybe it's a concept, maybe it's a, a feeling. When I, say, when I say sustainability, what comes to your mind? Okay, so I'm just taking a look at the chat box now. I'm gonna take this moment to have a quick sip of water. Uh, water. Juliana said eco-friendly. Hmm, I like that. Do we have? Any other suggestions? A new lifestyle. Hmm. Okay. That's probably like like future oriented as well, right? Hmm. Eco friendly is definitely that uh, that environmental perspective that we often think about with sustainability. Okay. Well, keep those thoughts going in your mind. So. There are a number of components, if you will, or aspects of sustainability. One, we have the environmental aspect. Two, we have the social aspect. And three, we have the economic aspect. Okay. Now, the environmental aspect is probably the one that we think about the most. And this is where we're looking at uh, the ecosystems and conserving natural resources. The social aspect is how we're ensuring healthy and equitable co communities for present. And perhaps the key word here is future generations. What we're doing at a social level that impacts positively now and the future. And the same there is the economic uh, security that we create for these, these global communities. So here's a definition that we could take, right? So I'll read this out for everyone. Sustainability encompasses the knowledge skills and attitudes, we need to ensure a fairer, brighter future for people and the natural world. Now, why bring this into the classroom? And I think this is a rhetorical question. I think we all understand why it's important to look at these aspects of sustainability. Um, but more important to us teachers is looking at the practical element. So let's talk about that. 
here are some reasons why, and I'm going to skip over those because we've just discussed them. But let's have a look at the sustainability framework for EOT. We've, we've recognized the importance of sustainability in language teaching and raising awareness of this. And this connects also to our life competencies framework where we're, we're teaching more than just language learners, right? As teachers, our role is to help our learners, our teenage learners, develop into good human beings, if you will, is a, is a nice way to put it, I suppose. But thinking about sustainability specifically, we have a framework that's based off of what we've just spoken about, that definition. And it touches on knowledge, values, transformation, and innovation. But let's take a closer look at one of these uh, dimensions. Oh, no, we're not going to do that, sorry. Uh, one. Of the, so if we can see that, that we have the dimensions there, the transformation, innovation, values, and knowledge. Um, if we close, if we go a little bit deeper into the, the core areas, you, the, you can see that we have, for example, understanding agency, working together, and making positive change, right? So these are the core areas. Now, as teachers, as a teacher, I look at this and I think that's brilliant. But where are the practical ideas for me in my classroom? Well, this is where we've created another set of activity cards that link directly to the sustainability framework. And you have some examples here. So I'm going to leave these on the screen for about 20 seconds so that you can take a look at these uh, and see if any of them pique your interest. So again, if you're looking for more information on the framework itself or the activity cards, uh, these are freely available online on the Cambridge website. You can also scan this QR code, which will lead to a, a, a website that's specifically focused on how to bring sustainability into your classroom. Now, We've touched on sustainability. I said sustainability was the one of the words. The other word, and it's really more than one word, but we'll call it a word, is AI. AI is, uh, is on everyone's mind at the moment. And again, I ask you to use the chat box here. How do you feel about AI? When you think of AI, how do you see it? How do you feel about it? What are your thoughts on the outlook of AI and the impact on the classroom or you as a teacher. I'm going to give everyone about 20 seconds to think about this, and then maybe you could write a word or a sentence in the chat box for me. Okay, so I'm just opening the chat box now. Hmm. So Juliana is scared and curious. Yeah, I think that sums up me, my kind of feelings about it as well. Gives us ideas. It does, doesn't it? Practical. A tool both intriguing and dangerous. Hmm. Yeah, I I agree with you all. Uh, Gen AI. It's, you know, I've been trying to use AI as a teacher and also as a manager because I manage a language academy as well. And it's interesting because... I often find that as a teacher, I'm still struggling to work out how to use AI effectively in my class. Now, we've recognized this and I see teachers wanting to use AI. And I think with every technological change, you know, there's, there's a few of us that say, no, we don't want to do that. We can't bring that into our classrooms. But in reality, we're going to need to at some stage in the future. And, and this is where support uh, that's based on research is going to come in handy. And so we've, we've created a generative, a generative, sorry, I'll say that again, generative AI idea pack uh, for you lovely teachers. Uh, so this is something that you can scan um, or you can uh, find in the chat box as a link. And basically what this will provide are some ideas of how you can bring AI into the classroom or use AI as a teacher. OK, so there, there's lots of lovely ideas in there. And I'll leave these on the screen for about 20 seconds to give you a, a short amount of time just to have a brief look at those.
I like re just reflecting on some of your comments, and I'm going to bring them up uh, for a sec, looking at that intriguing and dangerous, scared and curious. I wonder, and again, this is not related to the, the other content that we're going to be looking at, but I wonder how we will, in the next five years, maybe in five years' time, and we reflect back on this moment, will we still feel this way? Or will we, will we be so used to AI that we'll, it will just be another another teaching tool? I don't know. Something for us to think about. So we get to our first checkpoint. Uh, and in this first half an hour, we've looked at the resources that we have available uh, for those of you that are teaching or preparing uh, teenage learners. Um, and I, I want to thank you so much for, for your attention in this first part. Now let's turn to the second part. And we're going to be focusing on working with teenagers and working with thinking space. Um, but first of all, let's think about your, your classroom specifically. How do you motivate and engage your learners in exam preparation? Okay, let's go. Let's see if we can get at least one idea from everyone. Uh, what are some ways that you motivate your learners? What are some ways that you get them to engage in exam preparation? I'm just going. I'm going to open the chat box here, and I'm also going to put some. Uh, I'm going to put. I'm going to put an idea in the chat box as well. So one idea that I like to do with my learners is I like to get them to think about their learner pathways. And this is where I have them look at all of the learning that they've done over their years and see their successes and their failures along the, along the way. And uh, they draw this, they draw their learner pathways, uh, and we discuss that. And then we, then we change it to the kind of the future orientation. We think about, okay, so where does your pathway lead now? Um, and usually an exam is in the future. So they look at the, their future and they say, okay, I've got the exam coming up. How do we get there? How, what are the next stepping stones or the next streets in our pathway to arrive at that destination? And I find that's a nice way to kind of look at uh, the learning journey and emphasize that it's about effort more than innate ability. Very important for me. Okay, Clara has mentioned something very similar, knowing their goals and objectives. I really like that. I think that's a, and in fact, if you look at pack two in the, on the Cambridge Exam Preparation Journey website, uh, pack two goes into detail about some specific ideas that you can use to, uh, to work with smart goals and setting goals with your learners. Yeah, looking at their interests and preferences, brilliant. explain the importance of exam preparation to be successful. There's actually some really interesting research that looks at um, what we need to do to learn for learners to see, to, to create the most successful learning environment. And what, the, what we know is that at the start of the lesson, we need to set clear success criteria to learners, but we also need to show them the relevance of what they're studying in this lesson to their future selves. So we need to show them the importance of that exam prep. So yeah, I really think that's an important one. Okay, keep throwing your ideas in the chat. I'm gonna to return to these in, in a few minutes, but let's look at Thinking Space. Now Thinking Space uh, is the unique series in that it has exam preparation integrated, but it also looks at language learning in general and connects to the LOMLO uh, uh, competencies, if you will, based on the Cambridge Life competencies. So let's explore this in more detail, keeping in mind that our role as teachers with our learners is focusing on language development, exam preparation, and perhaps also importantly, motivation. Uh, and there are a few other aspects in there as well. I'm sure you would agree. So let's. So the what we're going to do in this in these next few uh, moments is look at how the units are constructed of the students' book. Now, at the start of every unit, you're going to see some kind of image, some kind of thoughtful image that to get you. The idea is to get you thinking. And so maybe we can do this now. Like if I look at this image, what do I what do I see? What does it make me think? I ask you the same question. If you look at this image, what do you see? What does it make you think of? Hmm, in the chat box, maybe we get some ideas. So for me, if I look at this, I think uh, long lost journey. 
a long lost journey or uh, someone who is missing. Oh, we've got pirates, a shipwreck, a survivor. Oh, I like that one. That would be quite interesting to sort of message in a bottle. Yeah, I think there was a there was a song from uh who was it by Message in a Bottle? Uh, it, I think it was I can't remember. A very good song, Message in a Bottle. Sting, maybe? Sting, yeah, something like that. Okay, cool. Communication, cool, an imp important non-told message. Okay, so something that was meant to be said but wasn't said, treasure map. Okay, brilliant. I've got lots of lovely ideas. Right, uh, so I can see that as teachers, you're also great learners. Uh, so this is this is the idea of what we want to be doing at the start of those lessons. We want to be exploiting those images. Now, let's say that we present our learners with this visual image because at the start of every unit in thinking space, you will have one of these lovely images uh, that you can use. So there are lots of th different things that we could do. And a lot of these questions that we're going to think about, they're already written in the course book for us and we can, um, we can exploit these. Doesn't mean that we have to use only these, we can add other questions as well, but it's great to get um, our learners thinking about, you know, how does this image connect to their lives? Get, let them use their imagination, all sorts of things here, okay? So there's a lovely uh, idea here that, that I've got on the screen and I'll give you about 10 seconds to read that. And so all we've done here is we've taken an image, we've used the questions that we have uh, in the course book, maybe we've thought of some of our own, and we've, we're really getting learners to focus on the topic at hand, but in a fun, interactive, communicative, and personalized manner. This is what's going to create that engagement at the start of those lessons, which is going to be vital, especially for teenagers, uh, to getting them engaged in that topic. So you can see this is what it actually looks like in the course book. So we have that, that first opening unit. And this is from Thinking Space B2. And then there are a few other things that we have on this page which are of interest to us. Okay, so one here we have those objectives. I mentioned before that we need to be sharing objectives with our, with our learners. Now we have the objectives of the unit, very good. We also need to take that and make them uh, focus on the lesson as well. We also have our get thinking videos. So as we've just done with, um, with the image, we also have a video that we can use to get learners engaged in the topic. And it's really worthwhile spending time exploring these because a lot of emergent language is probably going to come out as well. Language that learners need to use to talk about these themes, these concepts. And this is where you as a teacher could exploit that. So as we move through the units, we can see a few other things. We have opening pages that introduce the content and these are, these are based off of text. Okay, and the reason we use text is they're very easy to exploit and they're very relatable. We also have train to think sections. And what these do is these connect directly to the Cambridge Life Conscious Framework and the LOMLO. And we're encouraging learners to think critically and engage and develop their reflection skills. Okay, so these are really, really important sessions uh, that we should be focusing on as much as we can. Continuing along with that, we have pronunciation practices found at the back of the book, which you can see here, um, which is very important uh, and should be looked at uh, not as something that we do at the end of the class, but we should be doing it when there are clear needs uh, to focus on those things. And we have lots of support there for learners. Moving on, we can see that we use grammar. Uh, we have grammar that's done through a scaffolded inductive approach. So we're getting learners to analyze sentences that they've seen in reading texts and think about, you know, what did, how did, does this grammar connect uh, to rules? Uh, what does it actually mean? Now, there's lots of things that we can do to exploit that as well. For example, we might engage in translation here after they've created these rules. Hey, excuse me had lots of water coming up out of my throat. Right, um, extending that though, uh, and perhaps the most important element here is that all of this language, grammar and vocabulary is presented in context. So that's why we have the reading and then we exploit that following that. 
important to note here is that we're not presenting all this beforehand and, and then getting learners to focus on you know that grammar during the text no we need to focus on the context the meaning first and then we're focusing on form very important for us is we have this idea of videos many of our learners if we explain something to them they may not remember it the first time and so they need to access uh they need to be able to access videos outside of the classroom perhaps um, so that they can remember this information or access this information later. We've included these grammar uh, or short grammar videos that explain the grammar concept that you could use in class or also if you're flipping your learning they can watch these at home and then talk about them in class. They can also be used for learners that struggle with or maybe you've identified that a learner struggles with I don't know, the present continuous. And there's a video on the present continuous. You say, okay, for homework tonight, your uh, objective is to have a watch of that video and then tell me what it's about. So we're gonna have a look at, uh, at one of these videos. And, but, but while we're doing that, I have a few things I want you to think about. Now, we're gonna watch the video and then return to these sentences. But basically, I want you to think about if these sentences are true or false. Very easy, true or false, that's it, okay? All right, here we go. Mmm, that smells delicious. You're a great cook. Thanks. I'm not bad now, but I was a terrible cook when I first left home. I remember burning everything even macaroni. <laughs> really? Are we having this sauce with pasta? Well, that depends. Did you remember to go to the supermarket? Oh no, I forgot. I'll go now. Some verbs can be followed by both the gerund and the infinitive. However, using the gerund or infinitive changes the meaning. Remember is one of those verbs. Using the gerund means you are remembering something that happened before. I remember burning everything. Using the infinitive means you remember something you have to do in the future and then you do it. Did you remember to go to the supermarket? Wow! Are we going to climb up there? I'm not sure I can. It looks difficult. Don't worry. I'll help you. You'll be fine. I tried to climb with ropes once before, when I was a teenager. But I couldn't do it. It's okay. I'll go first. You can try copying what I do. Okay, thanks. I'll try that. Try is another verb which can take both the gerund and the infinitive. We use try plus the infinitive. Okay, so I don't think we need to watch the rest of the grammar. Um, I trust that our knowledge of grammar is, is very good. That's why you're here. Uh, so I wonder, true or false for these, uh, the, these sentences? Let's see if you remember. I'll give you a, 10 seconds to write your answers in the chat box. Let's see if you remember what these are. Okay, so Julian's got it, I think. So we've got false, true, false, and true. Okay, great. So this is basically what we're doing here is modeling how you could use these videos. You're giving learners a reason to, to watch them. And through watching them, they're going to create some explicit knowledge uh, of that grammatical structure. Ideally, you're using these when you have identified that learners are struggling with that grammatical uh, structure or that grammatical point. So there's a clear need for them to be watching it. Um, and, and this is a nice way that you can do that. Also, this is a great thing that you can do for homework, as I mentioned. Now, 
looking at the uh, the extra resources, we have, I'm just going to remove the chat box from my screen. We have a whole range of uh, resources that you can use with these videos that take learners' knowledge even deeper. Okay, so I spoke before about using images. And this is a, I, when I, I've been working with teachers for many years now, and we look at the course, we look at the product, and often we focus on the activities, which is great. There's lots of activities in there. But really, the course book has one of the most underexplored resources, I should say, in the course book are the images. And this is where uh, we can really exploit these for looking at the content, but also just, to, just getting learners to talk about them. Um, so a lovely idea that you can do is take these uh, and you're going to get them to talk about the five senses. And this is seems like a really simple activity, but it gives them lots of scope, lots of room to really talk about um, what's in the picture. And it goes further than just the descriptive, I can see people on a train. And it gets them to put themselves in these situations and think about themselves there. And that's going to push them to start thinking about more abstract language, more abstract concepts, okay, rather than just a simple, I can see. Super easy activity, zero prep needed, and it's going to exploit those pictures quite nicely. Okay, moving on. So we can see that we have these word-wise sections. And what they do is they provide practice with words or phrases that often have multiple meanings in English, okay? As we know, every language has certain phrases that can be used in different contexts. Well, these sections are aimed at raising awareness of those different meanings for different contexts. We also have lots of speaking tasks to personalize and practice language. Um, we know that really it's, in order for learners to engage uh, with whatever we're focusing on, it needs to be personalized. It needs to be focused on them in some way. And so that's why these have been integrated and we should be exploiting these as much as possible. So moving on, we have some examples here. But let's think about an activity that we could do with these. But yes, we could have learners answer, answer these questions, or we could put them in groups and we can have a speaking referee. Now, a speaking referee is where they're going to, basically they need to prepare some ideas for their discussion. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be in groups of four to six, and then one person acts as a referee. And so these are some of the rules. I'll give you about 10 seconds to read over them. So you can see here that the referee plays an important role in these discussions. One, they're ensuring that the discussion maintains is, is a discussion and doesn't turn out into one person hogging the floor, taking the floor and just giving all the ideas. They're really, and they can also be the person that gets those that are, that are maybe uh, less enthusiastic about contributing. They can really help those uh, get involved in the conversation. We can also support learners by providing them with some really important collocations or language that could be used um, to effectively engage in these discussions. <clears throat> so you could board these, you could create vocabulary cards for these, all sorts of things. Now important here, what are we doing during this? We're monitoring, we're, we're collecting information on feedback, we're providing that feedback in the moment. And maybe we're taking some notes that we can uh, we can give feedback after. We can also get the referee and the students uh, to give feedback on how the discussion went, how the referee uh, worked, what, what benefit did it have for the, for the conversation. So there's lots of different things that we can do here. This is a nice way that we can exploit these speaking activities. Cool. So important to note here, there are a few things that we need to take into account. Uh, you need to choose your referees carefully. Um, referees should be, you know, should be responsible uh, and should have very clear guidelines of how they're going to operate. Okay, um, A really nice uh, 
variation, if you will, is to get them to record their discussion and listen back and evaluate their ideas. You can also do a great activity where they listen back and they transcribe what they said and they they evaluate the accuracy of the language. Okay, so there's lots of different ways that you could use this. And as you get to the higher levels, uh, this becomes an even more uh, interesting activity. Okay, so moving on, uh, we have think value sections. Now in these sections, as you can imagine, they talk about values. They talk about being a human outside of the classroom context. They talk about what we need to be thinking about in different areas of life. Okay, so for example, here we have this idea of doing good. And these are great moments to exploit and talking about kind of those citizenship behaviors. You know, that connects directly to the LOMLO, but also to the Cambridge Life Commons in there. Those citizenship behaviors that we want our learners to be displaying in their life outside of the classroom. And every three units, we have uh, developing speaking and life competencies. We have culture sections and extended writing, and we have literature and extended writing as well. Um, this is a, an example of the Cambridge Life Competencies, and these are ex pages that focus explicitly on specific Cambridge Life Competencies. So yes, the Life Competencies are integrated throughout uh, the series, but we also have pages that focus specifically on these as well. Uh, and as mentioned here, we have model speaking practice. Lovely videos here as well that we can use. As I mentioned uh, previously at the start of the units, we have videos that pique interests, but we can also use uh, these life competencies videos to raise awareness of the life competencies themselves. Here we look at the, the culture sections. Oh, sorry, let me go back. And here we're looking at extending our awareness of different cultures, raising awareness you know, of how people live around the world, what they do. And this is obviously a, a, an important component of the LOMLO and Life Competencies Framework. If we're, uh, if we're focusing on writing, we have the extended writing sections, which connect uh, to the exam tasks uh, and tasks that learners are really going to be doing uh, in their real life, for example, an informal email. Now, a lovely activity that we could do here, perhaps you're going to assign uh, the culture page for work, sorry, for homework, is we could do what's called an information trade, which is a, a variation of a jigsaw reading. You're going to divide your class into three groups and have group one read a certain text and group two read a certain text and so on and so forth. And then when they come back, you're going to have learners trade the information that they learn. They're going to share the information that they learn and identify, you know, something useful from each of the, the, the texts that they would like to share with each other. And they can take these away and they can they can discuss these. And this is a nice way to incorporate speaking, but also uh, show them the utility of reading and bringing that into the classroom uh, from the homework. It's also not only focusing on, you know, uh, gap fill activities for homework. This is a, a nice kind of, Mm, holistic approach to, to the homework, I think. Uh, and one of the last sections here was to have the li literature and extended writing. And this is where we're looking at uh, real world literature. Uh, and another thing that we can do here, not nice selective is called a reading race. Uh, and this is where you have some questions that have been created for these texts, but then you might get them, uh, your learners to choose three of the questions to answer or answer at least three questions or answer as many as you can in 15 minutes. Now this, the wordings of these, uh, of these questions or these tasks here is very important because what we're trying to identify to do here as teachers is differentiate how uh, all these activities for the different learners uh, or learner levels that we have in our class. Now, many of us here probably have class sizes of 25 to 30 learners, perhaps more, depending on where you are and the context in which you're in. And it's very difficult for us to differentiate teaching to 30 plus learners. However, what we can do is differentiate the task. So if we're creating the success criteria that's based on choice, learners can choose the questions that they want to answer, then they're going to be more successful. If we have an at least 
This gives learners uh, the scope to have to answer the six questions. Or if they're hitting, if we know that they're going to struggle, but they can successfully complete three, then we're, we're, then we're creating conditions for them to be successful. And more success leads to more motivation, which leads to more success. So it's important that we are differentiating these activities in some way. And one of my favorite activities is actually called a choice board. And this is where uh, you create a list of different activities um, for, for a text, page, a unit, and learners work either individually or in pairs, and they complete uh, some of the activities on the choice board. They choose which ones they're going to, to complete. I've seen different variations where perhaps you have three colors on of the choice board, red, green and yellow and learners need to complete one activity from each of the colors so this is where you can push learners to make sure that they do something that's more cognitively demanding something that's more language focused something that's relatively easy okay so you have a mixture there as well um, i'm not going to get you to type uh the three that you would like but perhaps you can also think about uh the activities or some of the, the things that you've done in your classes could a choice board be something useful for your class? Um, it's definitely something that if you do, you need to do many times. Learners, the first time that you run, you, that you use the choice board, they're going to they're going to be a little bit. Um, they're not going to know what to do so much. So it is important that you train learners on how to act with the choice board as well. Okay. So every two units, we have a number of different sections as well. We have the get it right. Uh, we have the exam focus, and then we have the formative assessment, test yourself. So the get it right sections, these are based off the Cambridge English corpus. And what they do is they help, they help learners focus on the common mistakes that Spanish speakers make. And this is really, really important because as we move, especially into looking at the accuracy of language, we really want to focus down on these really common errors. And these are going to be the ones that provide, these pages are going to provide us loads of support uh, to get learners across the line in not making those mistakes. And of course, we have the say it right boxes, which are common themes through, through many of our products. Uh, and again, these are focusing on areas or problematic areas for Spanish speakers. Here we have the exam pages, and these focus directly on the Cambridge exams and uh, and the preparation that's needed to, to be successful in those. And then we have the test yourself. And this is the, the formative assessment that, that we can get learners to engage in so that we can look at this, what they've completed, how accurately have they been here. Now, we need to remember that these pages, these formative assessment pages, are not exams. What they are are important moments of reflection, both for the teacher and the learner. So they can look at, OK, this is the content that we covered. This is the information that I have retained. This is how much I remember. Do I need to go back and study more? And as a teacher, we should be thinking, well, if they got 50 percent of this correct, maybe I need to recycle that language again. Maybe I need to create another opportunity where we revise the content again. So these are really important pages um, for looking at the success of the learning and teaching in, in, in that stage and what needs to occur next. Uh, and we have the emoji scoring. So now we turn to the workbook. And again, the workbook uh, it uh, complements the student's book. So we have star system for mixed level groups. So perhaps you might um, assign a one star activity for uh, learners that may struggle. Uh, we have uh, or higher star activities for uh, other stronger learners as well. Or we can get learners to focus on all and they can rate how they feel that they went with those activities. Um, we have the get it right sections integrated into the workbook as well. So as we mentioned before, the get it right sections focus on those, those mistakes that Spanish speakers uh, make quite a lot um, in their English language learning. And so this is a great section that we could integrate into our homework maybe as well. Uh, we have language organizers. So this is looking at you know, what, what language have we looked at? How can we organize this uh, graphically uh, so that it's going to help with retention? Uh, and this is one way that we can help learners also be good learners, not only in our classroom, but in their, their learning and language learning outside of our classroom. So we're trying to instill those learning strategies that are going to be useful for them throughout their life. 
Oh, sorry. This is just some examples of some of the texts that we have. And we have the develop the verb. Sorry, I'll say that again. The developing writing sections here. And as pr as uh, we have in the students book, we have the exam integration as well. The consolidation units um, or the consolidation pages, they help students review their learning. And these go hand in hand with the formative test yourself uh, pages that we've uh, mentioned uh, previously. So we've looked at the, the student's book. We've looked at the workbook briefly. Now let's look at the teacher's book. And the teacher's book is the thing that's going to support us the most in, in our teaching throughout. Um, we can see that it, uh, this is one of the pages that looks at how LOMLO, how the competencies are integrated into thinking space. And you can see here, uh, which looks at the units and where these are touched on. And this is obviously very useful for us when we're, when we're asked those questions, you know, how are we meeting the requirements set out by LOMLO? We also see here uh, at the top, you can see activities or suggestions of warmers. And of course, we don't need to always follow these. These are suggestions of how to use the material. It's not meant to be fully prescriptive. And what I mean by that is the, the teacher's book is not telling you what you have to do. It's telling you what you could do. OK, very important to note there. And it also makes very clear the support that you have for each of the lessons or for each of the units. OK, so looking at perhaps what you can look at the worksheets that are going to be relevant there so that when you're doing your planning, whether it's from the course book, you can say, OK, maybe I can access those resources now and take a quick look. So I love this quote uh, from Elliot. He says, difficulties arise when we try to use textbooks exactly as they are without thinking about the needs, skills, and circumstances of the particular set of students sitting in front of us. And I think this highlights exactly what I was trying to say before, where, yes, we have this lovely product, has um, millions and millions of ideas and lots of worksheets and resources. But our learners are our learners. You know your teaching context. You understand the needs of your learners. You are the experts in the room which means that you need to be taking these, these resources that we're providing and exploiting them to meet the needs and wants of your learners using the resources that we have available to you. No course book is perfect for every single context. And we're not saying that this is. What we are saying is that Thinking Space is a brilliant resource for teaching teens, especially in the Spanish context. But we need to be making it relevant to our learners by looking at our learners' needs and wants and exploiting it. For those needs and wants. So I'm going to finish now with just some five tips for managing the classroom. I have five words that are uh, they're a bit jumbled. There's there's some there are some letters missing. I wonder if you can identify what they are for me. I'll give everyone about ten seconds while I take a sip of water. OK, let's take a look. So we have activate your learners right from the start. This is something that we touched on at the start of the webinar. Get them engaged. Ask those thinking questions. Personalize the learning. Last, we want to be establishing classroom routines. Just like young learners, teenagers need routines. They don't have routines. They go crazy. They need to understand you know, the different stage of the lesson where they are. Really important. Make our lessons flow, and this means that planning of how we're going to un we'll kind of join those activities. Make sure your learners do what you want them to do. <laughs> right. Your learners, especially teenagers, they're, they're not in control of the classroom. You are in control of the classroom. But that means that we need to plan those activities accordingly. Don't let your voice become high-pitched or loud. Yelling, we know, doesn't work with teenagers. Uh, in fact, the opposite often has a much higher impact on classroom management. So to wrap up today, what we've done is we've explored the resources that we have available and we've explored thinking space in some detail and hopefully we've answered your questions. And I'm gonna 
stop sharing my screen now. Um, and what I am going to do is ask everyone here. Well, thank you very much for your your, your comment, Martin. Um, yes, quarter of the bar, I imagine, is unbearable in the summer, yes. Um, so I'm going to open the floor now. Does anyone have any questions on Thinking Space or any of the resources uh, that we have uh, discussed today? Um, I know that my, my my colleague Rachel has been placing links crazily in the chat throughout. Um, so feel free to, to click on those. If you do miss any of these, please remember that they are freely available on online. Just go to Google and type in uh, any of the, the keywords from today and they will show up. Okay. So I'm just taking a look in the chat box and in the Q&A. Uh, I can't see any questions, um, which I, I'm hoping means that we've answered your questions. Okay. Uh, Rafael, you, you've raised your hand. So perhaps you can um, write your question into the chat box or the Q and A. Are you you sorry? Okay, so I'm taking it. You you don't have a question then. <laughs> All right. Well, before we before we leave, um, what I would like to ask you, if you would all be so kind, um, is we have a poll, um, which I believe, Rachel, do you have access to the poll? No, we don't have a poll. OK, we don't have a poll. Uh, we, we were supposed to have a poll. But what I would like you to perhaps in the chat box, um, if you could just give an, an indication of how useful you found uh, this uh, this this webinar perhaps on a scale of one to five, one being not useful or, or informative at all, and five being very, very uh, informative. Your, your feedback would be very, very useful for us. Okay, and I'm just gonna take a look in the chat box. Oh, is, the, is this book adequate for a school or for private English classes? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, it, again, it depends. So Clara, I'm answering your question at the moment. Um, it depends on the needs of your learners. Uh, but when we're thinking about thinking space for teenage learners, it's a brilliant book uh, for schools and for private English classes. Um, it touches on, as I mentioned before, the life competencies, but also some of the things that they're going to be touching. If it's for private English classes, the things that they're going to be looking at at, at school as well. So it's an excellent series for this. Uh, someone put an, a nine. OK, that wasn't on the scale, but I will take it. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I thought, thank you very much, everyone. Um, as I mentioned at the start, you're the real heroes. Uh, being here when you already have so much stuff to do is uh, is amazing. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, we're going to finish up there. I look forward to seeing you hopefully again at a conference, another webinar, perhaps even at school. Who knows? And uh, have a great start to the year, and we'll see you all soon, okay? Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.